Three Earth-sized planets have been discovered orbiting a tiny cold star, and some believe they could be our best bet at finding alien life. The trio of planets located about 40 light years away from Earth may have regions with temperatures that could sustain liquid water and life, although further research is required to confirm this. Derek Pitts, chief astronomer of the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, is with us now. So, Derek, what characteristics does a planet need to have to be a plausible lo location for alien life? Well, the first thing, Elaine, is it has to have liquid water, water in a liquid form. And so when scientists are looking for planets orbiting stars, they look to find the distance from the star where, if there's a planet, water could exist as a liquid. Now, they use water as the basis for this, liquid water as the basis for this, because the only model we really have for life of any kind in space is what we have here on this planet, which is based on water. So they start with that assumption first and then move from that point to see if they can identify other biological mar markers, say, in the atmosphere of the, of the planet. So scientists will now investigate whether these places are actually habitable, and, and you talked about, uh, about that. Um, you know, what are the kinds of things that they will do to test that out? Well, one of the first things they're going to do is they're going to try to look at what the masses of these objects are. These three planets that are orbiting this star that's just 40 light years away from us, which is really rather close, two of them are so close to the star that they are tidally locked in their rotation. That means that one side of the planet always faces the sun. So on the other side of the planet, it's always dark. So the front side is going to be very hot. The dark side is going to be very cold. There's some thought that perhaps there's some region around the area where that's right on the edge of daylight and darkness that perhaps it could be just the right temperature for water to exist as a liquid. So that's the first thing. They'll try to figure out the masses of the planet so they can determine if it's big enough to be what we call Earth-like, really. And then the next thing they'll do is they'll start to analyze the atmosphere. And by analyzing the atmosphere, that will tell them whether or not there are, whether or not there's water vapor in the atmosphere. It will also be able to tell potentially if there are any biological markers, any kind of gases that indicate the presence of life or the conditions for life. And one of the big ones, of course, is oxygen, plenty of atmospheric oxygen. And you might think they'd look for methane also as a marker of a of a uh, of a uh, digestive process Are they for that cows? might be had. <laughs> <laughs> cows give off a lot of methane. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And and I, I don't think that I don't think they'd be too upset if they found cows. That'd be It'd be amazing. a little odd. It'd be amazing. But they get that actually from looking at the planet Mars, where they have been able to identify the uh, you know some of a marker of methane in the atmosphere, which leads to the belief of the possibility that there's some biological process going on. So. Uh, those are the things they'll start looking for first. The good thing is the planets are so close and the star is so dim that they can actually get a good reading out of the atmosphere, uh, potentially with, uh, with uh, telescopes that will, be, that will come online uh, not in the not-too-distant future that will help them be able to figure out whether or not the atmosphere is good enough for the possible development of life. Wow, that's incredible. Last month, uh, as you know, Stephen Hawking and Yuri Milner announced the Breakthrough Starshot project that hopes to send tiny nanocrafts to the nearest star system. Are we ramping up our efforts to find alien life, or have we always been obsessed with the possibility? Well, we've always been obsessed with the possibility. The question is whether or not we have the technology to tell whether or not there is any life form on any of these objects that are so far away from us. And that's always been the big challenge, Elaine, is that these objects are so far away and it's so difficult to gather any real information or data that can help tell us this that we've had to wait for the equipment. But now we have very good equipment that is opening the doors to allow us to have the opportunity to figure out for real whether or not we can find a place that might be conducive to the development. So the, the Kepler spacecraft that has identified 1,050 objects like Earth uh, in space orbiting other stars, and there's a report to come out soon of even more objects like that that, uh, that we'll find. These, coupled with new telescopes that we have here on the ground and new space telescopes, will help us analyze those locations to see what the possibility is. So we still have a ways to go, but we're much closer to being able to really get any good data than we ever have been before. Wow, fascinating to think about. Derek Pitts, thanks really so is. much. Thank you.